So far, we only examined identity activation functions. We know that if we're going to use identity activation function, no matter how many layers we have, it's always equal to a single layer. So now let's consider the real cases. That is, the real activation activa functions we are going to have used in neural networks. Let's start with a simple activation function, which is a linear function. Given x, the sigma x is equal to alpha x plus b, uh, beta. If we, we do not buy h prime to be the output to be wt times ht minus 1, which is the input of this activation function, and then ht, the output of this layer, equals to apply sigma to h prime. Now we can compute the variance and the expectations of ht. We know that h prime have zero min, so then ht we have min equal to beta. By assumption, we're going to have zero min, which means beta should be equal to zero. Similarly for the variance, we know that ht is a linear combination of h prime, and h prime is already constant by if we choose the proper with initialization methods. Then if beta is zero, and we can do a bunch of other things here, we know that the variance of ht equals to the alpha squared times the variance of h prime. So because the variance of h prime is already constant, then alpha should be equal to 1. Which means if we, for the fourth pass, if we're going to have satisfied the assumptions we have before, then, that, then the linear function, the activation function, should be just the identity function we have. Similar thing for the backward function, we know that by chain rule, the loss function of L, the gradient function of um, loss with, with respect to the ht minus 1, the input of this layer, equals to the alpha times the loss function with respect to the input of the activation functions. And so then similarly, we know the expectation of is always zero, then we get zero beta, uh, beta, and the variance is actually of the input is actually alpha squared of the variance of the lot, um, the loss, uh, the gradient function with respect to the input of the activation function. Again, we have alpha equal to one. So then we actually can only choose activation function, which is close to identity function we have. Now let's consider the activation functions we actually used on deep learning. So we have we usually using sigmoid, tangent, or ReLU. But tidal expansions near zero, near x equal to zero, we know that it can approximate by a linear function here. For example, for sigmoid, it's equal to one over two plus x over four and some high order uh, function of x. Similar thing to tangent is actually equals to zero plus x. This is identity function and with some high order function of x. For ReLU, if x larger than zero, then it's actually identity function. So then we see that close to x equals to one, both tangent and the ReLU are close to the identity functions we have. If we choose x, the input is actually a values nearby zero, which is actually the case because you know that the weight functions are randomly initialized around zero, and the input, the output function also have zero mean and small variance, which means the activa activation the activation functions is actually close to linear function here. You can see the graphs here. Then for both tangent and the ReLU are fine, but the problem is, is the sigmoid because it's not close to identity function. What we can do, we can simply fix it by scale it. We use a four times sigmoid and a minus two, then it's close to identity function. 
So you can see from the right hand figure is that the blue line is a scale sigmoid. You can see that close to x equals to 1, the curve is almost identi uh, identical to the tangent and the sigmoid, which is very different to the original sigmoid. This is a green line here.